Let's talk to Jody Rocco, who is in Las Vegas, a place that probably does not have to worry about any devastation from a hurricane anytime soon. Uh, Jody, thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me as usual, Adam. How yeah, are you? We're going to get to the VMAs because you uh, certainly have your own experience with music awards. If you're if you haven't heard Jody before, we usually talk about politics, but for the record, she is one of the backup singers, or was one of the backup singers of Millie Vanilli, and they had they had a Grammy, but they had it taken away from them, even though like this music's still the same. Someone had to sing it, right? But we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, right, and I was part of the group actually. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. One of the four original members of the group, and we also won three American Music Awards, which we still have. So. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But we'll, we'll, we won't talk about the Grammy. But yeah, someone still sang the songs, regardless of who they put in front. But that's another story. Uh, let's talk right. about what's going on in Houston and your thoughts about this. We're in this interim period now. We don't know how devastating it's going to be, as I've mentioned earlier in the show, because tomorrow's going to be a big day. But what do you think about the whole response and the way people are talking about it? Well, I, I think the response from the from the Trump administration, for me, I think it's fantastic. They're doing everything they can. I'm not, that, that's not my issue about anything there. I think the biggest problem is common sense, which is not all that common, as as we know. If you know, since I knew when I was watching the news, which means me, like 300 million or 340 million other people, watch the news to figure out what's going on. So if I knew that this was going to be a devastating storm already at the same time these people knew, which is days before this hurricane hit, it's like being prepared in California for an earthquake where I lived for 14 years. Right. You're prepared in the event of a disastrous earthquake. And believe me, I was at the Big Bear quake, and I was at two other massive, devastating earthquakes where you had to be prepared. Well, Again, but Jody, but sense. the thing is, there's that's a general preparation for an earthquake. There's only so much you can do. You don't get a warning. Hurricane, it's a little bit trickier than that. Right. I agree with you. Well, Did you read no, the... it's not trickier. It's easier because you have that five-day warning, four-day warning, three-day warning. They told you last week that this hurricane is going to drop more water on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday than any other time because it could reverse and go back. Like yeah. I mean, said, I would like to days. think, and it is an issue in northeast Florida where I am now, that you just pack up at the first possible opportunity you avoid. I know. Two, year, two days before, you probably didn't have to worry about any traffic. You can get out of there in time. A day before is a different exactly. story, and it is a big city, five times more people than New Orleans. Did you read, by the way, the Carl Denninger piece at MarketTicker.org? Yes, I did. Okay, that was excellent, yes, I, I thought. Did. It was fantastic. He's absolutely right. Again, common sense. If you know, he, he tells the story of the guy, whatever, who says, yeah, well, I'm, I'm getting it together, and we're, we're going to go. I'm not sure if I want to go. And all of a sudden, he's on the top of his house waiting for, you know, because they knew a week before there was going to be this problem, and yet nobody took it seriously. I don't understand that. My, my, I would like to think that if I had a house here, you know, I would expect that every two, three years, I'm going to have to evacuate for during hurricane season and uh you know i don't have a house here just... it's not like a hurricanes are you know it's every it's week it's not like it's never happened before it's constant they are in hurricane season this is my point in las vegas we're in monsoon season right you're prepared for the flash flooding turn around don't drown and believe me people are stupid they think they can wade in the water it's like a rushing river going 200 miles an hour you will die yeah. You will pick up your car and you will die. Okay? So the monsoon season, you're prepared. You are absolutely prepared in the state of Nevada, especially in Las Vegas. Because those rains, those torrential rains, will pour down, drop a foot of water, and in 10 minutes later, the sun is out. But people are still in the floodwaters because they don't pay attention. Yeah, I would think every two, three years, you're just going to... I mean, Houston's far... But if you're in Florida, you're going to... Pack up your stuff, almost have it as a plan. It's going to happen every couple of years, and you're just going to go to Atlanta for a few days and enjoy what Atlanta area exactly. has to offer. And well, it's just going to happen. Money, you don't have we're to... poor. Not an excuse. Would you rather be dead or poor? What, what do you want? You have to make that decision. Right, and you can still get a Greyhound bus. You probably could have gotten on the bus at the. And look, if you're poor, you don't have anything. You're not going to lose that much. Realistically, you not get only out that, of there, except for your life. Right, and if you would explain to someone somewhere at some agency, if you would call them and say, we're poor, we can't afford a bus ticket, you think they're going to say, well, I'm sorry, you have to die. No, I can't I mean, imagine that somebody's just going to turn their back on you. There was so much in place 
during this. The biggest problem they're having is the infrastructure on the dams. If the dams are forced to release that water, it's going to flood even more. And it may not even, the levees still may not even hold. Because yeah. they're in such despair. It could be really tragic and by this in, time tomorrow. Could be. It could be. It could be very much so, yes. And the rain is supposed to continue until Thursday. And yeah. there's people that are still thinking that they can go on the top of their roofs on their house and they'll survive. Why would they think that? Look, I would have started walking by now. If I had no other thing, I would figure out which roads do not have floods or I'd swim part of it or go through the areas. There must be some path onto high ground sure. where you can just... Exactly. And, and if you're poor, by the way... Like, a lot of people, I think about this in terms of the Holocaust, a lot of people were killed because they couldn't part with their possessions. As uh, right. Anne Barnhart, who I like a lot, says a lot of people have lost their lives because they can't part with their precious shit. And that's the term she uses. Right. And, uh, and you know... Materialistic garbage is all it is in comparison to a life. You can walk 20 miles in a day. I mean, you could get to mm -hmm. somewhere. Okay, you're homeless hey, if you day. You're not going to freeze to death. The first thing I'm going to grab is I'm going to grab your walker because I know he can't walk more than maybe, you know, uh -huh. two or three hundred feet. And then he's going to be, and I'll grab that walker. And if I have to carry him myself, leave the effing house and walk. Yeah. We will get out of the way of the floodwaters. We will get out of the way of everything. And it does flood here. It gets really bad. Yeah. I mean, if I had no vehicle, I would start walking toward, if in Florida, I would walk 20 miles from the coast in one day. And I would just walk 20 miles more. The next day, if need there be, if, there, if you couldn't get anywhere, if traffic See, but or to bad. me, that's common sense. Right. That's common sense to me, though. And then I, you know, but I'm not seeing a lot of bad stuff on TV. I, I really, no. I'm not. I'm, you know what I'm missing a lot of? Mm -hmm. The left condemning anything that's happening. I'm not seeing that at well, all. Well, they're waiting. They're waiting. And they, plus they can wait all they want. There's nothing, there's nothing that they're going to be able to do. Everything is working like clockwork to make sure that this catastrophic event doesn't become some sort of whipping post for the disgusting left. And, you know, at a certain point, there's only so much that can be done. If it's a once-in-a-century storm, at a certain point, and this is what Carl Denninger would say, you've assumed the risk a little bit, just like it could happen in Florida. There's only so much you can do in a catastrophic storm. Right. You're assuming the risk. If you live in Philadelphia, the area I'm from, you're not, ex you know, you don't expect any risk other than maybe a race riot or the city being burned down if the Eagles ever win the Super Bowl. But that's another story. Um, we only have a little bit of time left. <laughs> that would probably okay. happen. It was pretty bad when the Phillies won the World Series in 2008 in Center City. Um, oh, but... Just with the two minutes or so we have left, you did watch the VMA okay. Awards yesterday, and you had some thoughts well, I, about that I on MTV. I didn't watch the whole show because I'm so sick and tired of the political agenda yep. of most of the people. And when I heard that Katy Perry was going to be hosting it, gag me first. I love her as a musician and a and a um, as a as a singer and a performer, but shut up and sing. That's all right. I want to hear from you. I don't want to hear your stupid asinine jokes or comments, or ridiculous political crap rhetoric garbage. Not interested. And I guarantee you, the 14-year-old that buys your record could care less. Yep, couldn't care less. So That's one of my pet peeves when people say could care less when they mean couldn't care less. It's just a thing with me, Joey. They couldn't care less. Yeah. Okay, so they're not interested. These 14-year-olds are probably looking at her going, what are you talking about? Just sing. You came out in a, in a really cool costume, and now you're making political statements. Not interested. The best part for me of the night, there were two. Taylor Swift's new song, uh -huh. which I loved, um, and Pink. Pink for me was just phenomenal. Pink's a just serious phenomenal. musician. All the other political... She doesn't get political, does she, she? She's all about music, right? She does, but she is very, very uh, reserved when she's in a moment like this because last night the Vanguard Award was about her. She wasn't mm -hmm. about to give it to anybody else, and that's smart. What was Lena Dunham's role, by the way? Was she a co-host with Katy Perry? I heard she was involved. I, can't I didn't see her name anywhere, to tell you the Lena honest God truth. I don't know. Well, this is a mm -hmm. bit of a missed tweet. I never saw anything with her. I saw, um, like I said, the um, the video, Taylor Swift's video, and she didn't show up because her and Katy Perry are, are having some sort of spat. 
Uh, uh, which I think is a stupid reason not to show up, but I think Taylor Swift is extremely talented. She yeah. reinvents herself. Every time she brings an album out, I thought the video was fantastic. The song is great, and it's just another um, notch in her lipstick case. Huh. She is moving forward. Love her. Real quick, did you so win? those two for me were great. Did you win any VMAs with Millie Vanilli? I'm trying to remember. I don't think VMAs were around at the Oh, time. they didn't exist in 89, which would have been the big no. year. And uh, I, I saw yeah. something interesting. I watched your video. You know, people made a big deal about the interracial couple in Hello uh, by Adele. But I, you had interracial couples in the Millie Vanilli video. I didn't realize that. I mean, like, that was 20 years before. You know, yeah, if, 25 if, they can, years ago. if they can find something, they will. I mean, look at Berkeley. Look at all these college campuses. Look at all these right. morons who will find anything. Look, if you want to say something against me, take the stupid hood off your face. Uncover your face and show who you are. Be a person. Yeah. If you're going to diss me, let me see who you are. So that way, when I hit you, you'll know it's me doing huh. it. No, no, no. They weren't saying anything bad about you. I'm just saying they made such a big deal about an inner, a matter-of-fact interracial couple being in the Adele video. And then I just realized you guys had done that 20 years before. I forget oh, which one it was. At least in, in two different... Girl, I'm going to miss you. Yeah. Baby, don't forget my number. Most of the girls were white. Yeah. Always. Yep, and got to uh, let you go, but I have to say it was cool. A week ago, I love listening to the Big 80s Countdown on uh, on Sirius FM, and it was 1989 was the year they did, and Millie Vanilli had two songs. Uh, like, I guess it would have been 28 years ago uh, last week in well, the I top 40. Well, I'm going to miss you. And Blame I, It on the Rain. you know it's true. Well, no, girl, you know it's true, and Blame It on the Rain didn't come out till the next year. No, no, in America, it was definitely, did. I heard it. No, not Blame It on the Rain, it was Girl, I'm Gonna Miss You, and Baby, Don't Forget My Number, it was. I heard it. Baby, Don't Forget My Number, exactly. That's what it right. was. Right, 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 right. All right, yeah, great. Blame have... It on the Rain came a little bit later. Yep, that's right. And uh, so you guys were pretty big by late summer there, but you had two different songs on there. So that was cool. Probably only mm -hmm. overlap for a week mm -hmm. or two. But great having you on again, Jody. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you for having me on. See ya. All right, honey. Bye. Take care. All right, bye-bye.